G'day, Hammerheads. Welcome back to the bench. So we've got a long-awaited episode today. It's going to be DeWalt versus DeWalt, uh, DCH 273 versus DCH 133. It's going to be head-to-head -head or head-to-chin, I guess. Uh, let's see how they go. So Hammerheads, I totally deliberately am filming this on the actual uh, first anniversary of the video about this little guy here. So very nice tool, one of my favorites. I have covered it a fair bit in the past, but uh, just quickly, let's rehash. She's very cheap, she's very powerful. Uh, things I didn't like, it's pretty basic, so it's got no vibration control, uh, pretty chintzy sort of handle and depth rod going on. Chuck, chuck release isn't the nicest. Uh, it's got no light. But other than that, real, real good value power tool. You know, this guy has been one of the stars of all my testing over the years, so uh, nicely done there. And the chin, look at this thing. Like, what is going on there? It's obviously a drop motor, but boy, you don't normally have such a big space for the motor there. What is happening? So DeWalt's rotary hammer lineup has traditionally been pretty confusing. Uh, largely because of these two guys, because they're both rated to the same capacity, but then very different price, fairly different specs. Um, it's a bit of a mystery why they didn't just make, say, a drop motor version and a D-handle version of the same tool, like a lot of other manufacturers do. You'd think that's a sort of logical choice, but you know, on paper, they're pretty different tools actually. So let's take a look at what makes this guy a little bit more special. Firstly, it does have a light. It does have a very sturdy uh, depth rod situation here. Really strong, nice handle. Uh, the chuck collar, I do like that the best because you can just sort of hold it on one hand like that and uh, you know get your bit out of there. Real nice to use. You can't see the battery level when it's in. Bit of a drag. It's got this fancy uh, belt, belt hook which actually retracts and uh, you can switch that to either side. So that's pretty nice. Uh, but the big thing and the reason for this massive chin on this thing is actually the vibration control. Check that out. What the hell? The whole inside, so the whole, you know, tool holder, gearbox, hammer mechanism, motor is all on a big spring inside there. Look at that. So crazy stuff. Uh, really clever design. Probably pretty expensive to make, I imagine, rather than what they normally do and just have a, you know, a bit of a wobbly handle going on. But that is the big difference between these two tools, and that's really quite innovative. So overall, this one is a bit fancier. This one's pretty basic. All right, so let's look at the specs. Uh, DCH133, fair bit cheaper than the 273, 299 versus 539. Weight, so the weight is, according to my scales, 2.3 kilos versus 2.6 capacity so the maximum capacity for the 133 is rated at 26 millimeters or about one inch and the 273 i do see this advertised as a 24 millimeter but on the tool itself it says 26 so that's how i'm treating her today impact energy big difference 2.6 joules versus 2.1 Impact per minute, 5680 versus 4600. So the 133 is hitting faster and harder. So the revs is 1550 RPM versus 1100 RPM. So the 133 also revs faster. And the impact power, so that's just uh, these two multiplied together. So theoretical measure of, uh, you know, hammer drilling speed kind of thing. Uh, the 133 is a fair bit more powerful on paper than the 273. And let's just check the RPM. It's around 1350, so a little bit slower than advertised. Twelve hundred, so a little faster than advertised. Well how about that? Alright, so let's get drilling. First test today is going to be 12 by 80 mil using a bit like that into 32 MPA concrete.
Alrighty, so we got a couple of little Milwaukee's on here from our last video, but the big news is the DCH-133 came in at an average of 10.49 seconds, and the DCH-273, average of 12.63 seconds. So this is about 19% faster for the 133. So our next test is max capacity into the same concrete block, but 26 millimeter chode of a thing. Going in 80 mil once again, let's see how they handle that. All right, so a bit of a red and black reversal of fortunes here, but that is just because the Milwaukee's were drilling much smaller bits because they are smaller capacity. The main finding here is that the long boy ended up with 41.1, averaging out a few of those runs, and the chin, 48.92. So once again, the 133, about 19% faster than the 273. All right, so next test, something a bit different. Uh, we are testing their drill only. So we've got a spade bit on there, it's 25 mil wide, and we are blasting through 75 mil or around three inches of pine. All right, so big difference now through the timber. The long boy got 4.89. And the chin with 8.33 seconds. That's about 70% faster. Big difference. So the next test is chiseling. So I whack one of these stubby little chisels in there. And we hit a concrete brick 50 mil from the edge, about 2 inches. And try and knock a chunk off as fast as we can. And once again, big difference for the chipping there too. The long boy ended up with 0.43 seconds average and the chin 0.76. So it's looking pretty clear that the 273 does not perform as well as the 133, but it costs a lot more. So why the hell would you want this? Well, because of the vibration control, she is a really smooth ride. Like the first time I knocked on rock with this, I wasn't sure if it was even working properly. <laughs> So to find out how much smoother, I just got the old vibration app from Bosch, INVH, and I just strapped that to the drill. Let's see how they look. So here's the 133 with the 26mm drill bit on there. And unfortunately the recording stopped early, but you know, we got enough to see a fair bit of vibration going on there. Sort of looking like high 30s to low 40s. Uh, the blue trace is the up and down axis of the drill, so that's the more important one. And the 273, way, way lower. So the blue trace, blue trace is around, you know, mid-teens to high teens. Doesn't quite make it up to 20 for this whole run, so. Yeah, way smoother. So let's look at them side by side, 133 is on the left here. So once she starts really moving, the 133 is off this chart, hovering around, you know, sort of the high 30s, around the top end of the chart there, that blue axis, and the 273 stays around here, so sort of mid to high teens. Big, big difference, and oh boy, you feel it. And while doing the max capacity drill, the long boy here, oh man, he got some crazy hard shuddering going on. It was really hard to, to hold on to, really horrendous uh, at times. Um, so that vibration control makes a big, big difference. Now on the box here, it says they've got active vibration control, which reduces the vibration at the handles compared to hammers without such system. And it sure does. The mechanism moves, but the, this handle and that handle are both attached to the outer clamshell, so they are both protected by, by the vibration protection. 
But is this active vibration control? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. I mean, it's just got springs as far as I can tell. So according to this little animation from Power Tool World, uh, it's just got two springs. So that's not active so far. So when I think of active vibration control, I think of something like this. Uh, so this is from Bosch uh, Toolstop video. And this Bosch tool actually has a whole extra swing bearing moving a counterweight out of phase with the hammer swing bearing here. This has an actively moving component which is actively reducing the vibration by countering the vibration of the, uh, of the hammer mechanism back here. So does the DeWalt have anything like that? Well, thanks to old mate the tool surgeon on Reddit, we can actually see inside without me having to knock one open. And I don't know, I'm not seeing anything like that. So we've got the motor, uh, we've got the rotation drive gear back here. We've got the hammer drive gear back here. Um, I don't know, I'm not seeing anything active in here. Big spring, another big spring under the baffle there. So I can't see any obvious active vibration components going on in here. But by looking at the parts diagram, I did find one thing that might help. Uh, that's this crankshaft here, number 47. So this is the thing that drives the hammer piston itself. So the piston gets driven through this central hole, but then we've got a couple of extra holes for balancing. And so that means it's going to have basically counterweighting on this side, offsetting the piston uh, momentum a bit. So uh, is that an active vibration control? I don't know. I mean, it's pretty standard sort of thing you would do just to balance out uh, any rotating component, really. Um, but uh, you know what? Maybe they can call that active vibration control. I don't know. Hey, anyone does know? Hit us up in the comments. So, so does all this explain the price difference? Well, I mean, not quite. Um, you know, this, this one does have much better features, but is that worth the almost double price tag that you pay for this one? Not really. So I do think they are selling this one uh, maybe as a loss leader as well. So, you know, they're basically not making any money off this tool. Uh, they are just, you know, trying to sell them, get people using DeWalt, get people talking about it, all that kind of thing. So if you're trying to decide between these two, what does this mean? Well, basically, uh, I would say that if you are drilling bigger holes or just using it like all day, I would go the chin. And if you're drilling more smaller holes or if you're, you know, only using it occasionally, uh, the long boy is going to be fine for you. The performance difference, you know, if you think maybe a sort of 15, 20% difference in drilling speed is really important, then, you know, go this one. But honestly, if you're using the tool a lot, this is absolutely the way to go. Your hands will thank you. So anyway, Hammerheads, that'll do it for today. I hope this has been informative. If you have watched this whole thing, thanks very much for sticking around. Uh, I really do enjoy doing this, but it is a lot of work too. So if you want to help us out, smash that subscribe button. And uh, from the chin and the long boy over here, thanks very much for uh, a great year on the bench and, you know, out in the backyard too. Scratches later, guys.